Flutter development can be done on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even Chrome OS. You can target Android, web, and desktop on each. But Mac OS is the only platform from which you can target iOS apps. So we'll be using Mac OS in this course. There are a fair number of steps needed to get your system ready for Flutter development. These include installing the Flutter SDK and then both Xcode and Android Studio. Xcode is needed to build your Flutter app for iOS. And the Android SDK that comes with Android Studio is needed to build your Flutter app for Android. For editing your Flutter code, people typically use either Android Studio or the Visual Studio Code Editor from Microsoft. I'll be using VS Code in the course, but you're welcome to use Android Studio if you're already familiar with it. You'll just need to adapt some instructions in the course for Android Studio. In the rest of this episode, I'll walk through following the Flutter install steps for Mac OS. If you get stuck at any point, please be sure to ask a question in the forums for this episode, and we'll do all we can to help out. Okay, so now we're gonna walk through the installation instructions for getting a Flutter development environment set up on your computer. You wanna start on the main Flutter website, flutter.dev, and then go to the upper right and click the Get Started button. Now you can follow along with the course using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or even Chrome OS. If you're not using Mac OS though, you're not gonna be able to build the Flutter app to an iPhone. You'll only be able to use the Android emulator or an Android device. That's because to build the app for iOS, you need to use Xcode, and Xcode only runs on Mac OS. So I'm gonna go through the Mac OS instructions. The instructions for the other platforms are similar. So just follow along as much as makes sense for your platform and alter the steps as needed. So now I click the Mac OS icon. At the top of these instructions, you have system requirements for Mac OS, including using a 64-bit operating system, the amount of disk space you need, and then some command line tools that are needed in order to run the Flutter tools. Most of these command line tools are probably already installed. The only ones that you might have an issue with are Git and curl. You can check if you have those command line tools installed by using the Mac OS terminal. So if you hit command space and type in terminal, that will start up a terminal. I actually use a different terminal named iTerm. So I would start iTerm, but I've already got it running, so I'll switch over to iTerm. And to search for those system requirements, you would just use the which command. So if I do which git, it shows that I have git. If I do which curl, it shows that I have curl installed. If you didn't have one of the command line tools installed, you get some kind of error message here. Going back to the install steps, if you have any trouble with any of these system requirements at the top, you can use the Homebrew Package Manager for Mac OS, which is found at brew.sh, to install those tools. If you have any trouble, ask a question in the forums, and we'll do our best to help you out. So once you have all the system requirements in place, you want to go to the next step, get the Flutter SDK. So click this button here, which will download a zip file with the Flutter SDK. Then follow along with the steps here to make a directory and unzip the download into that directory. If I go back to iTerm and I do ls bin, which is the place that I put the Flutter SDK, you see that I have a Flutter folder here and that is where I unzip the file to. You can also use git to install the SDK using the instruction as shown here under step two. Next up is to add the Flutter tool to your path. Now that's gonna depend on if you're running Bash as your shell or Z shell as your shell. And there's further instructions down below to update your path. So I'm gonna walk through those when we get there. Next up, you are told to run the flutter doctor command. So if you go to your terminal, and at this point you've got the flutter SDK installed, you've added the location of flutter to your path. So if I clear my terminal and I run flutter doctor, the flutter doctor will run through to check to make sure all the flutter tools are installed and you're likely gonna get an error message on most of them. So you'll probably get a check mark on the first one. But if you haven't installed Xcode or Android Studio yet, you're gonna get a message saying that those items are not available. 
So we'll rerun the Flutter Doctor command after we've installed those items later, and you'll see that they are, at that point, green. OK, so next up is the update your path step. So I mentioned earlier that this is going to depend on whether or not you use Bash or Z Shell. So if you use Bash, the file you're going to edit is .bashrc in your home folder. If you use Z Shell, you're going to edit the .z Shell RC file. And what these instructions are telling you to do is to add this line into that file. So if you go to your terminal, and you do echo dollar sign shell in all caps, it's gonna show you which shell you're running. So like I said, I'm running Z shell, so I get Z shell as output from the echo shell command. That means I wanna put that line into my dot Z shell RC file in my home folder. So I've already done that. If I do more dot Z shell RC, Here is the line that I was told to put into my Z shell RC file. So this means that my Flutter install is under my home folder inside bin. So the path I'm adding is home bin Flutter bin. That's where the Flutter binaries are located. If I hit Q to get out of the more command and I do which Flutter, you'll see there is my Flutter command in the bin Flutter bin inside my home folder. Now you might need to restart your terminal in order to have the Flutter command actually added into your path. So I recommend you read through the rest of these instructions and uh, they will help you with any issues that you run into. Next up is the platform setup. So this is setting up the iOS and Android SDKs so that Flutter can build for iOS and Android. For iOS, the only thing you really need to do is install Xcode. You can follow along with the instructions shown here. One of the first steps is to go to the Mac App Store and search for Xcode. And I've already installed Xcode, so I see an open button, but you'll likely see a button that says Get. You can also click on Xcode to get more details and then click the Get button here and that will install Xcode. The Xcode install does take quite a while. It's a pretty big download and Mac OS will verify the download once it's complete. So that does take a fair amount of time. You might wanna pause the video now, take a break and come back once Xcode is installed. Once the Xcode install finishes, you'll see an open button here. You don't need to open it at this point, but we can go back to the Flutter install page. Now you just want to run through the rest of the steps here under install Xcode. They just configure Flutter to work with Xcode. Okay, now that we have Xcode installed, we can actually test out the installation so far. The steps here say to set up the iOS simulator. You can run the open command from the command line or you can use Spotlight with the command spacebar and just type in simulator. And an iOS simulator will start up. Okay, now we're told to create and run a simple Flutter app by following these three steps here. So I go back to iTerm, and I'll clear my terminal. And the first step is to run Flutter create my underscore app. So I'm in my home directory. This is going to create a directory my underscore app. And the next step was to CD into that new directory. I'm going to clear my terminal again. And if I run an ls command, you see all the files that got added into the project. So there's a Android folder, an iOS folder, a lib folder, and some other files. The next step is to run Flutter Run. So this is going to build the Flutter project that was just created and then run it on the running simulator that we have. So I'll hit return and go back to the simulator. Okay, so after a few minutes, you see the Flutter template project up and running on the iOS simulator. So if you've gotten this far, this means that the Flutter SDK is installed. 
you've installed Xcode and you're able to build an iOS app using the Flutter toolkit. I'll go back to the terminal and type in control C that closes the app that was running. There are some more steps here to deploy to iOS devices. We'll come back to this later on in the course. For now, we're going to move on to getting Flutter set up for Android. Okay, the first step in the Android setup is to install Android Studio. So you want to go to developer.android.com, click on Android Studio, and then click this Download Android Studio button. You'll have to accept a license agreement and then click the download. That's going to download a DMG file to your downloads folder. So then you can click on the download, click show in finder, and then double click the DMG file, which will open it up. And at that point you can drag Android Studio into your applications folder and find it there and run it. Okay, now we go back to the Flutter install steps. And next up is steps to set up an Android device or set up the Android emulator. So we're gonna go through the Android emulator steps now. The first one here to enable VM acceleration on Mac OS that's probably already all set. You can probably skip that step. Then you want to go and open up Android Studio. So you can use Spotlight, Command Spacebar, Android Studio, and start up Android Studio. From here, you can click the Configure button and click on AVD Manager. So the AVD Manager is where you manage Android virtual devices. I've already got a few set up, but I'll just walk through the steps quickly to set up a new one. You click Create Virtual Device. Pick the device that you want to create. So I'll do Pixel 3. Then click Next. And you need to pick a Android system image. So this is basically the OS version that you want to run on the virtual device. You might have to click download to download one. I've already got Android R downloaded, so I'm going to select that and click next. Then you give the device a name and there's a few other options you can follow. But from here, I'm going to click finish. Okay, so here is my new AVD. I click the play button. And that's going to launch the new emulator that I just created. OK, so now I'm going to rerun that template project on the emulator instead of the iOS simulator. So first, I will find the simulator. And I will quit the simulator. I go back to my terminal. I'm still in that My App folder. If I type Flutter, devices from here. I see that I have one connected device, and that is the Android emulator that I'm running. So if I do the flutter run command again, this will build the Flutter app for Android using the Android SDK that came along with Android Studio, and then run it on the Android emulator. OK, there we have the same app running on Android now. So I go back to the terminal, hit Control C. Now back to the Flutter install steps. So we've finished setting up Android. There are some more instructions here to set up for web. We'll skip over those now. In terms of the overall flow, we've basically finished this install section. Next up is to set up an editor. Now you can choose to use either Visual Studio Code or Android Studio to follow along with the course. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. If you choose to use Android Studio, you'll just need to adapt some of the steps as we go through the course. To install VS Code, you can click this link here, which will take you to the Visual Studio Code website. From there, you want to click the Download for Mac button. That's going to download a zip file containing Visual Studio Code. You want to click Show in Finder, unzip that file, and install Visual Studio Code. Once it's finished installing, you can run it. I've already got it running here. Now, whether you choose to run Visual Studio Code or Android Studio, they each have what's called an extension or a plugin that enhances the ability of the editor to work with Flutter code. So in Visual Studio Code, you want to click this button here, which shows you the extensions that are installed in Visual Studio Code. 
And the extension you want to install is called Flutter. So you can type in Flutter in the search box here. And this is the one that you want to install. I've already got it installed. If you don't, this button will say install. So you just want to click it. And once it's done installing, you restart Visual Studio Code to make sure the extension is loaded. And from that point, you're good to go. One thing to know is that the Flutter extension also installs the Dart extension, which is here. Dart is the language that Flutter code is written in, and this extension helps Visual Studio Code work with Dart code. All right, going back now to the Flutter install steps. We've installed Visual Studio Code. We installed the Flutter and Dart plugin. If you're using Android Studio, you can go to this tab and follow along with similar steps. We've already installed Android Studio. You just want to, at that point, install the Flutter and Dart plugins as shown here. And with that, we'll go back to the terminal and clear the terminal and run Flutter Doctor one more time. So at this point, you should see this no issues found message. If you don't, you can just walk through whatever item is not correctly installed and try to install that again. If you run into any problems, ask a question in the forums for this episode, and we'll definitely try and help diagnose whatever trouble you're having. Once you work through all those issues, you're set up to do Flutter development, and we'll get started in the next episode by creating the project for the course.